Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of TalkBox News for December 29th, 2018. Today I'd like to bring you an article about Justin Trudeau, the Canadian Prime Minister, and uh, his path of destruction as he leads the country down a socialist, communist, globalist rule. Like father, like son, his father Pierre Trudeau, who ruled in the late 60s, 70s, and piece of the 80s. Canada's democratic system has empowered a dynasty that's not big on democracy. Two years ago, Justin Trudeau was asked which nation's type of government he most admired besides Canada. His answer? China's. You know, there's a level of admiration I actually have for China because of their basic dictatorship is allowing them to actually turn their economy around on a dime, he said. In this world, we're competing with countries that have the capacity to react to big issues quickly and completely. We need to make sure that even though we have to compete with them, we can get things done completely. According to Justin Trudeau, democracy is frustrating because it doesn't allow prime ministers to do what they want. And now Justin Trudeau is the Prime Minister, and he's doing what he wants, when he wants, that is for sure. Trudeau's statement gives important insight into how we can expect the second youngest Prime Minister in Canadian history to rule, but there is also a far more important and insightful predictor that should not be overlooked, and that's going to be his father. Trudeau is not the first Canadian Prime Minister to heap praise on communist China and its authoritarian rule. A previous Prime Minister, Pierre Trudeau, swung Canada far to the ideological left. He downplayed the importance of free enterprise and private property rights and sought to implementation his, implement his vision of a just society. He annihilated the role of Christianity in Canada and he became famous for initiating the multicultural experiment that seeks to turn Canada into an ethnic representation of the world. By the time this man left office, he had taken a virtually debt-free country to the edge of bankruptcy. And Justin is following perfectly in his father's footsteps. The Trudeau Connection with Communism on October 19, 2015, it felt like a coup had taken place. Somehow a failed drama teacher and university dropout with no real world experience had become Prime Minister of Canada. For many, those who had been blinded by Justin's rounded ass cheeks fell for the trap. For others, it felt like they had dropped the ball for far too long and realized what they had to lose. I was one of them. Yeah. He was played up like a little pretty boy, like he's, uh, well, he claims he's a feminist, so I guess that wonders why the more media portrays him that way. Shortly after Justin came in power, he had made all sorts of ludicrous statements. Canada has no core identity. Canada is the first post-national state, which plays into his globalist elite ideological ideas. Those were signals of things to come where liberals and the mainstream media would try to destroy nationalism, Canadian values and our identity. It also signaled that our sovereignty had been handed over to foreign powers. It forewarned that Trudeau was not working in Canadian people's best interest, but in global entities' best interest. And then it talks about where Pierre studied through the elite societies in his, uh, before his rule, and Justin Trudeau. Like his father, Trudeau Jr. attended the college Jean de Bibroff. Upon Fidel Castro's death, he released a statement saying he was a great leader and he was larger than life leader who served his people. It is important to remind people that hundreds of thousands fled the repressive regime after the revolution due to their poor record on human rights. Freedom of a speech was non-existent and dissent was not tolerated. Justin has already started cracking down on free speech. Oppressive communist regimes always crack down on basic human rights to promote more equality. Here is one important fact. Freedoms have to be repressed in order for totalitarian dictatorships to make everyone equal. Fidel was a communist nationalist. Justin Trudeau has shown to be more of an internationalist communist, which was rebranded as globalism under the umbrella of the UN.
Yeah, that's for sure. The usual lingo will apply where he will push for equality, a national identity replaced with a global identity, national borders removed to make way to the post-nation state, climate change subsidies funded by taxpayers demonstrate the strategy employed to reduce the citizens' freedom and independence from the state. It has been demonstrated in many communist socialist states in the past, people have to be made poor and disenfranchised to subdue their will. And this article by Dorothy Cummins McLean, under Justin Trudeau, Canada marches towards totalitarianism. And at lifesitenews.com, you can check out this whole article, but I want to focus on just one thing here. Communist totalitarianism stomped on religious freedom and drove women to abortion. That's why I was so shocked to read that Justin Trudeau wants to impose pro-abortion loyalty oaths on Canadian businesses who seek funding to hire students through the Canada Jobs summer jobs program so if you dare say you're a pro-lifer you cannot participate in any of these programs and she's talking about coming her family coming from a communist regime and settling in canada and shocked at where he's taking the country so looking at uh his admiration for China. Trudeau really does admire China's basic dictatorship and wants that power for himself. China's communist government exerts ruthless authoritarian rule. A ruthless authoritarian control over social media, sorry, to preserve social harmony. And Trudeau wants that for himself. The liberals have passed that off. Is Justin Trudeau's comments praising China's basic dictatorship as a joke? But we know it wasn't a joke. Trudeau really does admire the ruthless control China exerts over their population, and he wants that same power for themselves. In fact, the arguments being used by the Trudeau liberals in their efforts to control what news can be seen by Canadians on Facebook and other media and in their attempts to shut down the Twitter accounts they don't like, are disturbingly similar to social harmony argument used by communist China to suppress free expression. And he's really angered some of the Asian Canadian community who came to Canada for a better life. And the foolish remarks, Trudeau's foolish China remarks spark anger. It seems that he's not well informed, Asian Canadians say, of the liberal leader. Members of the Asian Canadian community are demanding an apology from the Liberal leader Justin Trudeau following his comments on Thursday expressing admiration for China's basic dictatorship. A round table of people from China, Taiwan, Tibet, Korea, all of whom say they suffered at the hands of the China's dictatorship said they were insulted by Trudeau's remarks. The statement was upsetting for people who say they were wrongly imprisoned or tortured by the Chinese government for speaking out for democracy. Yeah. And it's no wonder, because he continues on with his love for uh, Cuba and his communist rule by Castro, who is a good friend of the family. There should be no surprise at Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's colossally disingenuous statements on the death of Fidel Castro. The Trudeaus have been at this for six decades, flirting with murderous icons of communist oppression since the 1950s, when Trudeau I expressed his admiration for elements of Stalin's Soviet communism. In the 60s, a 41-year-old Pierre Trudeau visited communist China during the Great Famine and co-wrote a book hailing Maoism and denying the existence of a national food policy that killed 38 million people. He never retracted his China views, but in the 1970s, he cozied up with Fidel Castro, who, to, who until his death Friday, has held the Caribbean island in a form of political slavery. Why would Justin find it necessary to sidle up with the Castros and recently Chinese communists? His self-invoking comments on his family's links to the Castro follow recent revelations on his personal pay-for-access sessions with Chinese communist officials and oligarchs. The connections apparently generated $1 million in contributions by Chinese businessmen to the Trudeau institutions. And we can see here that uh, 
the anger of uh, I was exposed as by Trudeau remarking Fidel Castro was a larger than life leader who served his people for almost half a century, Mr. Trudeau said in a statement. Which is issued from a summit he attended at the, in Madagascar. He described Mr. Castro, who ruled as a communist autocrat for almost 50 years, as Cuba's longest serving president. And uh, the article goes on. You can check that out. We'll look at the official statement here. Fidel Castro was a larger than life leader who served his people for almost half a century. A le red legendary revolutionary and orator, Mr. Castro made significant improvements to the education and health care of his island nation. Really? I don't think so. While a controversial figure, both Mr. Castro's supporters and detractors recognized his tremendous dedication and love for the Cuban people who had a deep and lasting long affection for El Comandante. I know my father was very proud to call him a friend, and I had the opportunity to meet Fidel when my father passed away. It was also a real honor to meet his three sons and his brother, President Raul Castro, during my recent visit to Cuba. On behalf of all Canadians, Sophie and I offer our deepest condolences to the family, friends, and many, many supporters of Mr. Castro. We join the people of Cuba today in mourning the loss of a remarkable leader. And then there's uh, some strange articles questioning whether the Canadian PM, Justin Trudeau, is the son of Castro. And we won't go through the whole article, but this is when, uh, this is 1976 when they went there and the Canadian version of Air Force One, Canadian Force One, <laughs> I guess. And look at that. Now apparently they didn't meet and she was quite a little playmate uh, around the world Margaret Trudeau but they say she didn't meet him before Justin was born however the striking similarity is very very uncanny Cuba claims Justin Trudeau is Fidel Castro's son the suicide note left by Fidel Castro's eldest son has rocked the Cuban nation this week. The most astonishing revelation being the claim that the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was his half-brother and the son of the late Fidel Castro. So very, very interesting article that you can go through here at Ruthfully Yours. And uh, the Canadian government and the media have come to his defense. Not, no official statements from Justin or Margaret or anything like that. But uh, this article from uh, Global News says, No, Justin is not Fidel Castro's son. And it goes on to uh, list the, the reason supposedly. But uh, nobody has made any other official claim that he isn't. And uh, this article from the CBC, Justin Trudeau sounds like his father's son. Which one? And they show a picture of Castro. Very strange. But he's certainly much an admirer of communist dictatorial rule. And the same picture. And here's uh, Castro at the uh, funeral of uh, Pierre Trudeau. So he was definitely a family member and here's a couple angering comments of his uh, Trudeau's uh, public statement there that I just read a moment ago to you and is this real statement or a parody because if it's real statement from the PM of Canada it is shameful and embarrassing and Ted Cruz Obama and Trudeau before slobbering adulation on tyrants take a minute to look in the eyes of victims of communists Disgraceful. Why do young socialists idolize totalitarian tyrants? Castro, Stalin, Mao, Pio All evil, torturing murderers. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very, very strange why uh, they would be so uh, into it. But that's what I have for you today. So it certainly seems like he's a lover of all things communist, socialist and looking towards uh, being part of the globalist 
new world order. And uh, if this man is re-elected in 2019, you can kiss the nation of Canada goodbye, I'm pretty sure, as he will continue his destructive path, disenfranchising the population, and could be the most dangerous ruler for the United States to consider as such a close neighbor. So, please like, share, and subscribe. That's what we have for you today. And I uh, thank you for tuning in and checking out this article. And uh, we'll see you again on the next report. Thank you very much. And this is Talkbox News. We'll see you at the next report.